Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, CSS is a programming language that has been the butt of quite a lot of jokes thanks to the fact that, well, despite how simple it looks, it does have its strangeness. Today, we're going to explore one of such examples and at the same time, take a look at what we can do to prevent this from becoming as big of a problem as it needs to be. Namely, we're going to be taking a look at the box sizing property in CSS, but in order to understand this, we first need to understand a little bit about the CSS box model. Very quickly, to reason about the size of each element in the world of HTML, we can picture them as a series of boxes. The innermost box is called content. Whether you have text, graphics, or any other kind of media, the content box will fit tightly around that. Then we have padding. This is an area of empty space. Think of it as a quiet area around your content to make it easier to read. Moving out some more, we have the border, a filled area outside the padding designed to box in your content to create some visual contrast. Finally, we have the margin, which separates items on the page from each other. The simplest way to reason about these four parts of the box model is to think about padding and margin as invisible spaces, with the padding being an inner spacer and the margin being an outer spacer between items. That, I think, is the easiest way to picture how everything hangs together. And with that, we can start to take a look at why things start to get weird when you have multiple elements interacting with each other. Here's a simple and rather contrived example. Say on your page, you want a sidebar that stays out of the way of your content. You've decided it needs to be 100 pixels wide. That column will be home to a couple of elements that may potentially contain different content, so you write some CSS like this. That's all well and good, right? You have the width set to 100 pixels. Well, except you've only set the width of the content portion. The margin and padding adds on to that width, realistically making elements wider than the intended 100 pixels. This is the default behavior of CSS. To change this, you have to use the CSS box sizing property, which takes us back to the topic at hand. The default box sizing behavior we've seen here is called content box. We can change box sizing to border box. When we do this, the width and height of an element now includes the padding and border. In other words, whatever padding and border sizes you have set cuts into the width and height of your content. Note that the margin isn't included here. So yeah, if you have multiple elements that have different padding and margin sizes, but you still want to line them all up easily, border box is the way to go. On the other hand, if you have a fixed content size in mind and you don't want that to change, then stick to the default content box. It depends on what you're trying to do. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, these two conventions are just two different ways of looking at the same thing. If you choose one language, you lose the convenience of the other. So there's a trade-off involved. Either way, that's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. I hope you've gained some insight today. But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with Nerdfirst.net.